Good afternoon, guys. Welcome to uh, So You Want to Hack a Car. Um, just so nobody sues me, you can break your car with the tools I'm going to show you. Uh, I can't help you fix your car, so, you know, please don't whine to me if you do something dumb. A uh, little tip, though, on most cars, if you unplug the battery for 20 minutes and then plug it back in, it works again. Like, I, I, wish I, I wish I was kidding, but that is the truth. And now I see why they didn't want to do the... Sorry, the HDMI cable isn't working amazingly well. Uh, about me, my name is Jerry Gamblin. I'm the principal security engineer at a startup out of Chicago called Kenna Security. Um, my personal blog is at jerrygamblin.com. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at jgamblin. I'm always available to answer questions and, and talk to you guys about car hacking or cybersecurity in general. So they gave me 45 minutes, but I need like 25 minutes. So we're gonna get through this and then everybody is gonna get some time back to go enjoy the rest of DEF CON. Um, why carhacking.tools? Because we're not gonna do this, right? Um, if, if you're here to learn how to like take over a car and hit the brakes, go in 90 or whatever, this, this isn't the, the talk for you. This is hacking in the, the late 90s, early 2000s version, right? Your car has a ton of data. You wanna see that data. Your average car probably gives you four to eight gauges while it has about 150 to 200 data points in PIDs that it's just spitting out all the time. And if you're like me, you're like, I wanna know what all that data is. You know, I might not have an oil temperature gauge on my dash, but if my car is spitting that data out, why am I not collecting that and looking at it and overlaying it on a map? Or why am I not figuring out like what my you know, coolant temperature is or monitoring my gas? <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do because I love data. I want to have all the extra data I can I want to be able to do stuff like this, right? I want to be able to use Torque Pro and overlay my car's data on top of the, the dash cam, right? It's, it's useful, your car has the data, and it costs about $11 to get this information out of your car. So what is carhacking.tools? Um, I go on and off on car hacking. I like to get the data out of my car. It's just, here, here's how it starts. Like, oh, I really want to figure out something on my car. So then I spend like four days recompiling all the tools on Linux to get them to work. And then by that time, I'm on to another project because I have ADHD. And, you know, just getting the tools installed was enough. And it's, so I just decided to put together some shell scripts to take about the 20 most popular Linux open source tools and let you guys build them automatically. They have all of the uh, dependencies that are needed. So you just either just download the OVA and run it in VirtualBox or run it in VMware, or you just run the, the shell scripts that's on my GitHub page and it'll just install all the tools. And I'm gonna try really hard to keep those up to date over the next year. Um, oh, I should have put this slide up. Here's, here's all the tools that are, that are installed. Like you have your CAN utils and your CAN bus utilities and your CAN backed app and you know, socket CAM and UD SIM. So you can, you can pull this OVA down right now and there's, a, and there's a simulator on there and you can start playing with it today or night in your hotel room. And it's also really affordable. Um, the best OBD2 adapters are 30 bucks and you can get them on Amazon the next day. Uh, I will put these slides up, but all of this information is on the, the website with links directly to Amazon to, to these so that you don't have to take photos of the screen. <laughs> I mean, unless you want to, because I just see that all the time. I don't know what people do with those pictures after conferences. Like, um, and this is what it looks like. This is the, this is the full build out. Like, if you download the OVA, you have a car hacking 
desktop. Um, so it's it has all the tools. You run it, and you can start pooling data with Wireshark or with Socket Can or with Cantact right into your into your system. Um, let's just talk about some of the challenges. Uh, car hacking is hard and dangerous. Uh, there's probably 150 people in here. If we have two people who have the same car, like the exact same model car and the exact same year car, it would be super rare. And when you're trying to figure out the data your car is giving you, you can't Google it, right? Like, I can't sit there and Google, like, please tell me what my Toyota Corolla means here because I'm the only person in the world in my garage at 2 a.m. trying to get PIDs out of my Toyota Corolla, right? Like, this is old school hacking. You're not gonna, like, find a proof of concept on some paste bin page that somebody dropped there because, like it or not, you're the only person looking at the data coming out of your car in most cases. And you can lock up your car. I, getting ready for this talk, I was in a hurry. I, I had to uh, take my car in the shop about three times. So uh, that's mostly because I'm terrible at Python. Um, it's a super small hobbyist community. Uh, I will guarantee that whoever wins the CTF out there uh, does it professionally. I, I don't, there are very few hobbyist car hackers that can get a foothold and spend the time necessary to do it. You talk to those guys, I love them. They're like, oh yeah, I just get an ECU, which is a $500 computer that runs your car, and I put it on my test bench at home. And like, so they're, they're sitting in their office doing this. I'm out in my garage with no air conditioning trying to work on there, right? Like, so that's, that's the split. If you're doing this as a hobbyist, you're likely doing it on something that you have to drive every day, and you don't want to break it. While if you're doing it professionally, they send you the brains of the computer and you can sit in your desk and, and work on it. So it's a totally different way to look at it and, and that causes this problem. Um, people start open source projects and then they just abandon them in, the, in, in this field. And, and I'm not sure why. I'm trying to get people to be better at this and I'm trying to help where I can. Um, you know, you get, I, I love Charlie Miller, but like this tweet is true, right? Like he's like, I don't know why people write, write these tools. I wrote a tool and yeah, and you know, 2016 that hasn't been updated and nobody touches it. So it just sits there and rots. And, and then you get stuff like this. I, I, the, the Python OBD2 tools, the guy who maintains that, moved to San Francisco, doesn't have a car now, so isn't updating the pip. So if you want to do pip install Python OBD, you're, you're downloading uh, an install package with 45 open bugs that are known, right? So this community in general needs help. So if, if you want to get into it, like be willing to give back, be willing to share that information because that's the only way it's going to go from like one person in their garage trying to do this to, to a thing where people can really start getting the data out of their car that they need. Um, in reality, virtu virtual machines and Bluetooth plus serial really, really sucks. I'm not sure if anybody's uh, tried to do that, but all of the Elm adapters have FTDI serial, most of them, and trying to get, trying to get that to, to run through. Uh, Sorry, 90% of the room is leaving in the back. I don't know what's going on. No for you fire or something. Um, yeah, it's, it's really hard to, to bring all of those tools to, together into one, one spot. So I recommend, if you can afford it, to pick up the cheapest laptop that'll run Linux and to do it there. It'll make Bluetooth so much easier. It'll make, it'll make all your serial adapters so, so much easier. Uh, the future of car hacking tools. I'm going to um, add more tools. I have a few pull requests in to, to build out some stuff. There's going to be a better OVAs. I'm really working on that to, to make this more useful for an organization and group. And then we're going to go to Docker and a Pi image because 
those are the next two steps. And hopefully by this time next year, we can have this built out for, for Windows and Mac. Um, this is a really short thing. I wanted to have a conversation. There wasn't a lot of data here. I wanted to just release the tool and get people who are interested in doing this to actually um, have the tools, right? It was much more about doing the, the exercise of building the scripts to install the tools. It probably took me you know, a month of time to do that. So that's basically all I have. Um, the OVA tools are at carhacking.tools. Like if you go to that site, you can get a link to the GitHub page and you can download the AV OVA. I'd like to thank Kenna Security. Um, the engineering manager's in the back, so if you're in college and you're looking for a job, we have a great program. We have flex time. They gave me more than enough time to work on this during the week, so I just thought it'd be, if you're interested, I want to thank them because they're a great place to work. Um, and to be honest, if you guys are in college or you just don't have $11, I have probably 10 or 15 OBD2 adapters that I'm not going to use that I want to give to people who will use them. So if you want the hardware to get started in this, please come and see me. I'm more than glad to give it to you. I just am going to start with people who either are unemployed or, or in college first who, who want to jump in, and then anybody else is more than willing to have some of this hardware. I, I really do want everybody to take time possible to go and look at the tools and see if they can help improve this and I'll answer all the pull requests we can. So thank you guys. I'm I don't, sorry that we had, uh, sorry it was so short. Um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions anybody has and I'm not sure what's going on in the back still. Thank you.